Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the second swing golf, joined today by Kevin Kraft, our master fitter at the Columbia store. Today we're in the Twin Cities and we're doing a what's in the bag for Kevin and no, this is not deja vu. We did release one about three months ago on our YouTube channel, yes. um, but things have changed a little bit in Kevin's bag. So we're going to go over the changes uh, primarily that have been uh, gone on in your bag, Kevin, over the last few months. So, uh, and, and I think you forewarned everybody in the last edition that things change often for you, so. They do and they don't. <laughs> um, I mean, look, the, the whole putter thing, that's yeah. well documented, right? Yeah, that's, right. Uh, I've got two of them in this bag right now. So, <laughs> you know, that just kind of, lends itself to the whole thing but um yeah i've made some some kind of wholesale changes over just a just the last few weeks mm -hmm. actually so um a lot of a lot of new stuff sure a lot can happen in three months man yeah. no i I, I agree i agree yeah. completely um so let's let's quickly go over just kind of um high level what has not changed i okay. know the driver the fairy wood the yeah. hybrids those are still the same model i know the driver yes. head has yes. a new design to it if yes you know, but yeah um those things for sure are still the same as last time yeah so i'm still playing the aerojet driver yeah um but because i went to the bgt uh golf solutions brava shaft yeah uh the graphics of that shaft um i wanted to accessorize <laughs> and uh so i ended up with the uh 50th anniversary head um, exact same characteristics as the last one. Uh, I'm at eight degrees with draw setting. Yep. Um, so everything's pretty much the same except the colorway. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. it looks and awesome. fancy. Head so, color. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's, and then you good. mentioned the last time the paradigm triple diamond three wood at 13. would be in the bag. Yeah. As advertised. Yeah. Um, with a little bit of lead tape now to mm -hmm. get that swing weight up, needed a little extra. It felt like it was kind of lacking a little bit of pop. So throw uh, a few grams of lead okay. in here, and all of a sudden, boom! Everything just kind of fell into works. place. Yeah. It is. It's uh, so so. It's been good. Um, it's been put on notice. Okay. Uh, okay. Just like perhaps some testing we've done in the last days. There could have been a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every club in this bag is always on notice. Yeah. Because as a club fitter, I like to tinker. Yes. So um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so and then the hybrids, King Tech from Colorado. Yeah, the King Tech hybrids two and four, they they aren't going anywhere. Uh, there is an option out there for a, a two driving iron on occasion if there's mm. a, a short course that's got a lot of tee shots where I just need to kind of yep. you know flight something down. Um, so this one would potentially come out, but it doesn't come yeah, out yeah. very often. That just doesn't okay. happen very often. And okay. my four hybrids now, uh, really one of my favorite clubs in the bag. Uh, I had a hole in one with this thing uh, at Christmas time or just before Christmas time. We got a little bit of little custom thing here. I've got, uh, I got some, oh, there it is. is. Yeah, it is. I got yep. a little, little, little epoxy going in there. Yeah. So um, I've just been too lazy to take the grip off. Um, I, I, I notice it and then I forget about it. Yeah, of course. I notice it and I forget about it. So That's just, yeah. it's a club that has character now, right? It so, does. Yeah. You yeah. You can't, you can't just take away that character nope. from a club, especially nope. if you made a whole one for you. I know. It's kind of like, I don't yeah. want to like, you know, that's a little bit of weight. Maybe that makes all the difference yeah, yeah, in the world, you never right? Know. Exactly. So, yeah. so now let's get into something that's new in the bag. Okay. I see a new set of irons that were yeah. uh, not there before. So. Yeah. Um, I had been sticking with my Mem Tours, which yeah. I had played for the last two seasons. Um, I realized that as I was trying to mess with some of the new stuff, I was basically trying to build the same set that I already had. Yeah. So the dim little light bulb, you know, finally came off and went, well, if you're trying to create the exact same thing that you already have, why bother? Yeah. Right? So. Uh, so then the question becomes now, why do I have another set in the bag that's basically doing the same thing as what I have right. been doing? Yeah. Um, so I just felt like I needed a change, more or less. Um, I, the Tour Iron set that I have, it's, it came naturally set up the same specs uh, loft-wise as okay. my MIMS, but there's a little less offset, and I found I was a little more right side dominant in my misses. Okay. Uh, maybe not getting it squared up quite as well as okay. I would like. So I just decided, hey, let's see what happens if I throw the the C B M B combo in. And in doing so, I did some testing and found I needed to go a little stronger. Well a little stronger bending lofts is going to put a little more offset yeah. in there. So um, first round out with them, I've only got one round in with them. Uh, it was 
it was amazing. Yeah. I was rather shocked. Yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't. I mean, they're smaller, right? So I didn't know whether I was going to have any problems with that. Sure. Um, so where does that where does that? So it's the CB and B combo. Yeah. Um, they they are actually sold as a set. But where yeah. for you does that combo? So transition? I've got a, I've got a really interesting interesting one going because I, I threw a, a third dynamic. So I've got a double okay. I got a double break. Um, I actually put the five UT oh okay. uh, utility yeah. iron in as my five iron. Okay. Um, I've been watching what I do, and my tendency is to catch things a little thin in the longer irons for whatever reason. And so this actually gives me a little more ball speed, yeah. uh, a little more trajectory when I catch it well, and a little tiny bit more spin. So the good thing about that is, you know, the ball speed helps me keep the distance but the spin and trajectory help keep me from getting too much distance. Mm. I'm not looking to expand, uh, you know, how far the ball goes. I've had the same yardages now for 30 years. Yeah. I don't want to hit it further. The great thing is that as I get older, uh, if I need it, there's clubs out there that'll do yeah. that, right? So I'm going to keep that one in my back pocket because uh, <laughs> there's going to come a time yeah, where yeah. I'm going to need that. But right now I just want to hit it the same distance as normal. So I like the trajectory and the ball speed okay. that I get off this. It's a little more forgiving. Uh, you get those long shots over water, and you get that little bit bigger head and a little bit more little soul down here, and it's it's just it's kind of okay. You know, it's, uh, just makes you feel a little bit more little comfortable. Little sigh of relief, a little bit. Yes, step yes. up to that important yes. shot. So the CB portion, I went six and seven iron. Okay. Um, typically, when we're going to do a break in a for a, a combo set, it's sort of where where the individual feels they're going to be most comfortable with the the more challenging iron. Yep. So the MB for me, um, I just felt like you know eight iron is kind of a comfortable spot. Uh, it's not necessarily one of my green light clubs. Uh, green light clubs for me are kind of nine iron on yeah. down. Uh, eight, seven, six are kind of yellow, right? If we think about a, a stoplight, stoplight, yeah. 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 So um, so I figured, yeah, let's let's do six and seven in the in the CB, okay. make it just a little tiny bit more forgiving, and then we can, you know, the, the more green light clubs we can go into the MBs. Yeah, so, gotcha. Um, if you look closely at the heads, you're going to see a lot of lead tape. Yeah, uh, I've made some significant changes to the weighting. Uh, again, I wasn't feeling initially like I was getting the kind of pop that I needed, and this is something that, uh, as clubs have changed, they've tended to get. Some of them have tended to get lighter, and you have to pay a lot of attention to this when you're ordering irons too. Um, you want to make sure your swing weights are are good because something that's too light, there's too little mass in the head, it's just not going to jump, it's right? It's going to be kind of dead. Yeah, after there's, there's there's nothing there. So these came in in about C9, and I've got because uh, I do play a half inch short, so oh, that sure. kind of throws some things off, right? So um, I added some lead, and I'm now up to about D2. Okay. So a little heavier. Yeah. Um, that's probably helpful as well. The what I, I really like the CBMBs. I get a little more spin, and a little bit more height, and that okay. that just goes to control. So, okay. uh, trying to improve my control dynamics. Sure. Not that I had a whole lot of trouble when I was playing the, the MIM tours. Yeah. But I I don't know. It just just felt like a time. It just felt like. Time. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, speaking of control, is that also a new set of wedges? In the it is. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, a couple different things here, right? So I always order the gap wedge in my iron sets, yeah. and then I never use it. Um, I just, for whatever reason, decided I wanted to try this one out, right, and throw it in there. I mean, I'll typically try them out, but um, right off the bat, this thing was just amazing. Like, this is going nowhere. This is yeah. staying in. I might even, even if I changed irons again, this is probably going <laughs> to stay in. This thing just feels fantastic. So uh, gap wedge is, is a set wedge, and then I did throw in the uh, the new Cobra Snake Bite full face wedges. Oh, okay. Um, I've got a 56 turned down to 54. Okay. Uh, I had to go to 56 to get the uh, to get the full face. I decided I wanted the full face. On, gotcha. On I was going to ask about wedges. the full face. Had you done full face before this, or is this the first time? You so the second time, uh, I played uh, snake bite wedges back in 2021. Okay. And they only had, I think they only had 60 degree at the time, okay. or 58 or 60 in the in the full face. So now we've got it down in the, in yep. the 56. So uh, 56 went down to 54. These are both clubs that I like to manipulate a lot around the greens. So having that little bit extra groove yeah. out to the out to the sides is is kind of nice. Sure. Um, I don't necessarily love the look of high toe full face. Yeah. Um, 
and these aren't really high toe. These are just full face. Yeah. So yeah. So they're sure. good. They they feel good. Um, really nice around the green. Still getting used to them a little bit. There's, you know, there's always a break in period, especially when you're, oh, you're yeah. working with wedges, because uh, those are all the touch shots, and you got to yep. feel how fast it's going to come off, and how much spin you're going to get, and right. fresh grooves are lovely, because you know ball stops really nice. Yeah, yeah. So. Those are then you get the cool spin back and all yeah. that stuff that yeah, you yeah. see on TV. Yeah. Um, should we talk putters now? Do you want to dive into this or? Yeah, I mean, we, it's, it's the elephant in the room. We might as well talk about it. So, um, yeah, I've got two putters in the bag right now. Um, I'm testing, okay? Um, I'm always testing, but I'm, I'm testing two right now. Um, one of which is um, a Spider. We've got Spider GT. Mm -hmm. Have some adjustability here on the bottom. Uh, we've got weight up to the toe because I'm a little bit of a toe striker. And so this actually just kind of helps get the ball sure. rolling the way I want it to roll. A little more of a solid pop when you do yeah. the top side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so we tested around a little bit here. So this is these are the settings. Uh, I went with a little bit bigger grip this time, and uh, for this one, and then it's you'll see here in a second. So this one's been good. I got one round in with this one, and it's. Uh, it performed well. It didn't make anything, but it rolled the ball well. No, that's kind of the first step, to that, right? That's the first I, step. I guess so, yeah. And then, um, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know if you all noticed, but there's this one putter on tour that seems to be doing really well. Yes. Um, it's the Jailbird. The Jailbird, right? So this is not that putter. Uh, I have some issues when it comes to aesthetics of things. And the. That, that Jailbird Versa has some aesthetic. It's it's unique. It it is so to it. the Versa part is fine. I like it. It's a nice, it's a nice aiming tool. Yeah. Uh, but the three dots on the top oh, line. the three dots. Okay. I can't stand it. Okay. I can't stand it. Uh, it just bothers me, and I, I, I just, you know, it's kind of my okay my issues, of course. So we had this one and uh, at the store. So I I picked this one up. I like the lines on it. Uh, I like the line on the top, and then I went. A little bit crazy. <laughs> um, so Simon, yeah. our our, our yeah. owner, yeah. Um, was talking to me, and you know we we're talking about putting, and it's always just this conversation of I don't know why I don't make putts the way I want to make putts, <laughs> and da 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 da. And he, he said, well, you know, there's this trend going on right now, and if you haven't noticed, yeah, if you haven't <laughs> noticed, and he's like, well, just put, just put something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like. Okay, sure. Why not? I haven't tried it. Let's let's, let's see what happens. So um, we're gonna put this thing through the paces hopefully today. Mm. Um, I did put a, this flat jumbo max grip on here. I've never done something like this. It's, I was gonna it's ask. Quite you, big. You've never used anything like this before. No, no. I've okay. never gone to some to these these lengths. So the 17 inch grip. Uh, I extended the putter out to 36 and a half inches. I can't go any bigger because uh, it gets caught up in my shirt. Yeah. And uh, so that's as long as I can go. Um, but it sits really good. Okay. Uh, it's got very little loft, which is good because I tend to add loft to the putter as I'm okay. stroking things. I don't know. Well, you're you're getting closer to what you need, right? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's why, okay. I keep, that's why I keep two putters in the bag because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> it, it's just... It, uh, it's hitting hope. You well, know, we're throwing um, spaghetti at the wall and just hoping something sticks. Well, I guess the next question then is... When is the next edition of What's in the Bag going to be when we have more <laughs> updates to make? Because, I don't know. When am I coming back? When, uh, when, when, when yeah, I mean, hopefully over? again here soon. Um, um, and we'll, we'll check yeah. in and see how things are. But that's the latest yeah. of the changes in Kevin's bag. So, yeah. um, and stay tuned to the channel for more <laughs> testing and um, some club comparisons as well that we've done with Kevin. Yep. And um, we have some potentially some clubs we tested yesterday that might be actually in the bag soon. So. This is probably might be different by the time we even re release this thing. But, could, could happen. Uh, but Kevin, thanks for giving your insight today and kind of giving yeah. us the um, inner workings of your bag currently as it stands right now. Yes, as it stands right now.